Hi, Eva here. Long time no see, huh? I'm sorry, uh, summer has just been way too busy and I have totally neglected my YouTube channel, so I'm sorry about that. But now I'm back and hopefully I can get on a weekly schedule again. Uh, that's my goal. Uh, so today I just wanted to start out with a short little um, video for you. Um, quite a while ago I um, happened to win um, a nice set of 24 um, uh, Mission Gold watercolors and uh, see, uh, 24, there was 24 tubes in here. I have exchanged a couple of them because there was a white and a black and I don't paint with white and black but um, I got another little one of eight tubes and there happened to be a couple that were different from what was in the 24 tube set so I put those in instead. But, um, and I just uh, looked up on uh, Amazon and I noticed that you can actually get this set and it's 24 tubes um, of um, 7 milliliters each. So, you know, that's a fabulous price, uh, under $50 they were. So if you're new to watercolor, um, and these are artist grade, um, professional grade, so uh, they're great watercolors. So uh, if you're on a budget and you want the good stuff, then uh, I can highly recommend that. I have painted with them um, in the past. I usually you know, paint with my regular palette, which is this one here, and I only have 12 colors in. Um, and what I wanted to show you was that, you know, I always like to have a guide on my palette and I have another YouTube video where I go through how to make a guide and I talk about the colors I usually paint with etc. So you can just look at that one on my YouTube channel. Um, and um, here um, I have used them in the past for traveling and um, when I got this set here and it was a prize I got for winning some competition I can't remember what it was I think it was for a Share Watercolor Society's uh, Jewish show a um, number of years ago. Um, they also gave me this palette. Um, I don't know if you can see. It's called, it says Watercolor Palette. And I don't know if this particular exact, exact palette is still available, but I know that there are similar palettes available. And you can open it like that, and there's 18 slots. Um, so it gives me six more colors than what I usually paint with because I usually paint with the palette with the 12 slots. And it's a travel palette. And so the good thing about it is it has like a rubber seal around here. So when you close it up like this, it really seals so nothing runs out. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that the colors in here, if they're not dry, they're going to run all together. So don't do that. If you're going for a trip, fill them out. Um, before you go and let them sit for a couple of days so that um, your colors can dry and then you're good to go. And then um, in the, I made um, this little color guide for the colors I have in mind here and I just taped it on the front here but that was really annoying because when I have it open I can't see the guide and I like to have my guides handy so I can see what the colors actually look like. Uh, so, one of my brilliant students uh, showed me, she had a, the same palette, and she had, and, and you can see there's a tray here, so you can actually take that out, and then you have an extra mixing area, which is really nice. And so she, uh, uh, thank you, Terry, uh, she had um, used this as a guide and cut herself a piece of watercolor paper that is the same shape and that way you can uh, put it inside your uh, watercolor guide you can put your watercolor guide inside here turn it the right way um, and then you have your guide right down there um, so you can look at it when you're painting um, so I decided I wanted to do that too. I wanted to be smart as well. And so I used a 140 pound Archis watercolor paper, which is what I normally paint on. And um, I just used this here as a guide and cut it out. And now I'm ready to go. 
and make my own little watercolor guide for this particular palette so then I'm, I'm all set when I travel. And I might still take this one and just paste it on the front again because, or tape it on the front again because that way, you know, when it's closed I know what colors I have in there. Probably I'll do that. But um, I already went ahead and I took a fat Sharpie marker and I made a line a fat line down there because you know I like to paint over uh, a black line so I can see how transparent or how opaque my colors are. Uh, and then I went ahead and measured out and made little marks so that I have 18 somewhat identical slots um, for my pigments and so it you know did that, used the ruler and I'm not going to bore you with that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use some masking tape and I'm going to tape, try to make it straight, I'm very straight challenged just so you know, meaning I'm not very good at straight lines. So <clears throat> I like my guides to look nice so and now uh, last few years I just use some masking tape to mask out so that I get a straight line so like that. And uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to just start over here. And uh, I had filled, I had filled this uh, palette with not all the colors, not 18 colors when I started out, and that's why um, it's starting kind of funky with. Uh, the uh, burnt, burnt Shenna. So that's Burnt Shenna. So I'm starting with that. And um, the way I do it, and I'm just going to show you this one, and then you can, and then I'm going to just uh, do it off camera so you don't have to watch me paint little swatches. So I'm going to start with Burnt Shenna at the top. <clears throat> and I just sprayed my colors with water so that they're ready to go. And um, stab my brush here. And uh, let's see, I might take another brush also and put a little bit of water here on this end of my paper. Because I, I want to put the color on full strength. And just a little watery still. So let's, there, yeah, full strength over the line full strength and then as I move over the line um, I start adding a little water to it and so I can run in here where I put down the water and dab my brush get the pigment off so I can get the full range of the color that's what I like to have so that way I can see what a color looks like full strength and when it's really watered down that's my that's my plan to do all 18 colors this way and then I can take off see not straight but oh well there we go and now I have to wait for that to dry before I can do the next one but that's how I'm going to do the whole piece of paper here with uh, the 18 colors and um, I'll get back to you when I've done that and if you have a palette like this or a different palette and you want to do a little uh, a little uh, swatch card that you can put on your palette or inside your palette if you have one that lifts out like this one go ahead and do that and I'll be back so I just wanted to show you that I'm making progress and I'm doing it the top and then the bottom, but you got to be really careful because what happened to me is I forgot that this was still wet uh, when I was working up here. So um, I work up here, then I can do one down here, and then I have to put it aside and uh, wait for it to dry. Um, but at least when I start from the top and the bottom, but of course you know you have to have all your spaces counted out and everything, but that way it goes a little bit faster. So. I will be uh, done soon and um, and then um, I'll show you 
what it looks like and then you know I'm gonna draw uh, I'm gonna write on of course the name of the uh, colors and I'm also gonna lift out to see how easily they lift you know not only do I want to see how transparent or opaque they are I also want to see how easily they will lift out when I scrub them. Make sure that they're dry before you put a tape over. You can't see me down here, so oops. So make sure it's dry before you put tape over a color. And then here we go. So that's how I do it. This one looks crooked, which is not surprising. And this one doesn't look right either. There. I mean, no matter how hard I try, this is not going to be perfect. I already know that, but at least I try, right? Alrighty, so I only have one slot left. And um, I'm going to just do that, just for a little repeat of how I do this and everything's dry that you want to make careful make sure that you're careful that everything's dry and then put this on I found out it's better to tuck the ends under because that way I could turn it so I didn't put my hands in the wet paint just a little tip for you there and the one, last one I have is the one that's in between the opera rose and the permanent rose and that is uh, the one they call rose matter so it's a very dark red so you can see I didn't follow on this one this palette because I put the colors in so long time ago and I didn't put them all in in one go so I didn't completely follow my own rule on uh, following the color wheel I have that brown in the middle of the reds but Oh well, it's in between the reds and the pinky reds, at least that, right? But it doesn't matter so much. I mean, you can arrange your colors however you like. Um, the main thing is that you know where they are, so you don't have to go searching for them, uh, you know, on, on your palette, so to speak. Um, so searching for them on your palette while you're in the middle of a painting. Um, so it's a good idea to kind of have a system and more or less stick to that system, I think. So that way you just instinctively know where your colors are. All right, so let's get this one rose matter on. I'm leaving all my puddles, well, not all of them, but I left most of my puddles out here because they're so nice and intense and clean that um, I can use them for a painting. I think I'm gonna paint a poppy for you in my next demo. So, let's see, can you see what I'm doing? Yes, so I start here where it's the most intense, go over the black line, and I had already put some water in. This end where I want it to uh, slowly bleed out so I can see the, the rising uh, of the color there hit the water and I can see the paint is beginning to flow so I can get a little bit of a lighter rose matter yeah to me it looks very much like I think I mentioned earlier I think it looks very much like the Alyssum Crimson in most other paints there we have it maybe I want to add in just a little bit more here and rinse out my brush, dab it. Usually I have been going back and just see if I can lift back just a little bit so I really get the light light at the end there. There, I think that's good enough. And then let me 
take the tape off, try not to uh, get my fingers in the wet, wet paint. And be careful when you take the tape off that you don't rip the paper when you go in from the edges. So there we go. All right, so then that last one just has to dry. And then my next step is going to be um, writing in the names of the colors with a permanent ink pen. Probably I'll use my uh, Micron, my Micron uh, archival ink pen. And then I'll write it out in the lighter parts so, you, so I can actually see it, and you can see it too. And then one more step that I like to do, um, I do like to do that step after I've let the, all the paints dry and, and, and sit for maybe a day. And then I'm going to go in and lift out um, spots to see how easily they lift back. By looking at what I have so far, I can already tell uh, if I lift it out here, you can probably tell too that I don't find that the colors are all that transparent. I noticed that earlier, um, even though a lot of them say that they are transparent. Uh, doesn't look so much like it to me when I paint over the black stripe there, but it's okay. You know, uh, you can make any color transparent if you just add enough water. But um, they're definitely bright and brilliant. So. I will be back when everything is dry and I can show you the next step. Okay, so my um, color guide has dried enough. It, not enough, it has dried. It's, you know, there's no such thing as enough. It has to be dry before I start writing on it. And as you can see, it curves up a little bit. Um, this is 140 pound, I do believe. Um, it's definitely not 300 pound, and I, I don't think I have 90 pound anywhere in my studio. So um, if that um, happens, which it does often, uh, you can just um, put um, uh, an iron to it, or you can also just spray it a little bit on the back, and then put some heavy books on and let it sit until it dries, and then it'll flatten out. I'm not too worried about it because it's going to go underneath. Um, this little uh, tray in my palette, so that that's gonna keep it flat anyway. All right, so just um, let's get started, and um, the first one I have here is burnt sienna, so I'm just gonna take my marker and write burnt sienna. And since they're all mission gold, I don't really have to write the initials behind. Um, that's what I often do if I have a palette where I um, where I use uh, different brands. Then I always write like for Winter Newton, I W N, and for uh, Daniel Smith, D S, etc. Uh, and mission gold, I would write M G. Uh, even though M G, that would be. Hmm, that wouldn't be a good idea because M. Graham is usually what I write, M. G. So, um, maybe I'll just write gold or something. But I don't have to worry about it. So that was burnt shenna. And then I have my Indian yellow. It's a very warm yellow. And then I have my lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow. And then I have permanent yellow deep. And so on and so on. You don't have to watch me write all those. That's really not that interesting. I'm going to be back uh, once it's time to uh, try to do the lifting test. Okie dokie. So everything's dry. I've given it a little time to really um, settle in and now we're going to just do the last little thing on our um, little guide for our travel palette with the Mission Gold watercolors. So I take a piece of tape and tape it down across all the colors and 
then I'm going to do the same thing here and have a nice little area exposed and that is the area I'm going to lift out or try to lift out. So there we have it. Bend those in. All right. So, um, I like to be uh, methodical about these things. So I'm going to use not a scrubber brush, just a, um, a, a nice kind of cheap flat brush with nylon bristles and um, that way it's uh, everything is the same. Okay, so here's the brush I like to use. It's just a flat, cheap brush and um, it's one of these um, masking fluid brushes. I buy them in uh, 10 sets and this is what they look like. So we get five flats and five um, little uh, skinny detail ones and they're meant for a masking fluid. But application, but and I get them from Jerry's Autorama. It's a creative mark that create, that make them. Um, I like to use these because they're not a scrubber brush, but they do have a little stiffness to them. Um, and then I use paper towel and lots of clean water. And um, with a damp brush, I just start out in between the tapes here. I scrub. I dab, rinse out my brush, and uh, make sure you don't want it, you know, dripping wet. Just damp, otherwise the water's going to run everywhere. So I scrub one more time. This is the burnt sienna, and I'll do one more time. So I do all of them the same. So I do three times scrubbing. And then I compare because you know you got to have the same method to each color, otherwise, you know, you won't know what the deal is. So there was the burnt shenna. Scrub that out. And then the next one is Indian yellow. So, same thing. One scrub, dab, and rinse. Make sure your brush is clean, otherwise you just scrub in the color again and make sure your brush is just damp, not dripping wet. Yes, scrub number two. And and then we're going to have scrub number three with a clean brush. And there we have it definitely staining. And we move right on to the lemon yellow. Scrub number one. Rinse. Make sure we have a clean brush. Scrub number two. Dab. And rinse the brush, clean water, and scrub number three. Okay. And there you have it. And I'm going to do them all, and then I'm going to remove the tape when you watch. There's no need for you to watch me scrub out 18 colors. That's going to bore you to tears. So I'll be back when I've done my job. All right. I um, lifted out doing my three-step method on every single one and now very carefully I'm going to remove the masking tape and we're going to see what we got. Be careful, don't rip anything. There we go. All right. So, you can see that a lot of the colors are staining. I did not get even the burnt sienna, which is normally not that staining. Um, the only one 
that lifted back pretty good was uh, Opera Rose and the Ultramarine Deep. All the others, including their uh, Cobalt Blue number one, uh, very staining. See? Um, and um, that's just uh, something that you will have to uh, know when uh, you're painting with the uh, Mission Gold colors that they um, most of the colors are more staining than you would find in some of the other brands. Uh, and you would also find that uh, quite a few of them are not 100% transparent. You can see when we paint it over the black line that there will be a film, short, a little film over the black, which indicates that it's not transparent. But a great bright colors and a great price. And um, yeah, I can uh, highly recommend them. And uh, for traveling, this, uh, this palette works really, really well. And um, now I'm gonna put it in here. Yeah, it's, it's bending a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that because, you know, when I put this thing over, right now I have my puddles, which I'm going to use. But uh, you can still see. So you can also see that even if you have to use this area, if you are doing a lot of mixes, um, your guide will still be visible. Um, so that was that little exercise. Um, have fun. And if you have another type of palette, you know, um, just uh, make a guide for that one and um, it's a really good tool and you learn a lot by doing it. So happy painting and see you soon.